Hey everyone, MTAS here, and I know with the Inazuma launch 2.0, there are going to be a lot of new players to Genshin Impact, as well as returning players that might have taken a break. I want to fill you in on some things you might have missed, or if you're completely new, things that will help you out tremendously on your journey through Genshin Impact. So, let's get started. I've got a whole bunch of tips here. Uh, we're going to try to rapid fire these bad boys, and let's get you geared up and ready to go. My first tip is stamina. Now, if you're just starting the game, you might notice that your stamina bar is much smaller than mine. Well, unfortunately, when you start the game, you don't have the maximum stamina bar unlocked. So what you're going to want to do is find all of the Animoculus and Geoculus around the map. Now, if I go into my bag here, this is one of the Animoculus, this is one of the Geoculus. These are things that you can find around the map, but I've got a quick tip for you. There is a Genshin Impact interactive map. If you just Google it, it will show you all of the locations for these. And what I recommend you do is use that map and go to your in-game map and mark them down. You can actually put a little marker down. You can get, I think with the new patch, like 150 of them. So you can mark down everything you need. Go to that area, clear it, get it, take it off, whatever you need, but make sure you get them all. Then what you're going to do is go to a statue of the seven. I'm going to go teleport there right now. And you can actually turn them in there uh, for the Animo. So if you're doing one of the Animo statues of the seven in Mondstadt, you can do that. Or if you go and get the Geoculus, you can do the ones uh, in Liyue. And uh, you can do the Geo ones there. This should be a priority, especially the ones in Mondstadt, so that you're not running out of stamina the entire time. Hold on, ad break! Now you might notice your boy is looking better than ever. That's because I'm decked out in some Kingston Fury merch and I have updated my PC with the Kingston Fury. I've got 32 gigabytes of memory right here that I'm going to be throwing into my computer. This is plug and play content, boys. I put this in, my computer's better. And uh, you can get it for yourself too. Now, if you don't know who Kingston is, let's have a little chat. You might have even used this product in the past without knowing because there was the HyperX Fury memory, but the Kingston Fury is their new stuff, the new line, and they've got 20 years of experience. For the past two decades, they've been doing memory the best on the market. So if you're interested in upgrading your PC with a better memory setup, then look no further than Kingston Fury. Links are down below. They've got multiple sizes and specs, so regardless what your PC setup or motherboard is, this will be able to plug and play, and you're going to have a big upgrade to your PC's memory. So what are you waiting for? Click the link down below and find out where you can get yourself some Kingston Fury memory. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, and let's get back into the content. Tip number two, focus on one or two characters to carry your team. Now, you might notice that I've got a bunch of characters with weapons, level 90, and different artifacts, and all these things, but I've played the game for, like, nine months. However, I still have multiple characters at level 20, hardly leveled up, no artifacts to be found, no real weapons. There aren't enough resources in-game to level everyone. What I highly recommend you do is focus on just a couple of characters and max them out. Get them their weapons. Max out their talent levels, give them artifacts, and put all your resources into a couple characters that are going to carry you. I know that tier lists might not be the best thing, but if you go look at a tier list, you see a couple characters that you have that are on that list, you can kind of make it a, an assumption that they're going to be decent. If they're a five star, you know, they're going to be decent. If you go and look and you might have one of these banner characters, you're going to be, uh, you know, winning. Put a bunch of resources into them and they're going to kick ass and they're going to carry your team. Once you have leveled them up, you can start considering getting some other support characters to help out. But even with just one character with a four star weapon leveled up and ready to go, you can start pushing through content pretty damn easily. And honestly, if you really push your resources in, uh, you can like one bang a lot of enemies in the game early on. Now, I've got one tip that's really going to help you early on. You can get a free healer named Barbara, I believe at AR18, which is really good, but someone said the other day, Hey, I don't have a polearm user, I wish I did. Shang Ling is one of the best characters in the game, and you can get her super, super easy early on. All you have to do is beat floor 3-3 of the Spiral Abyss, which is maybe daunting to some people, I'll talk about that in a moment, but this character slaps. She can be a main DPS doing physical damage with a crafted weapon called the Crescent Pike, or she can be a support character, uh, an insanely good support character that can make your teams uh, hit really hard with pyro damage. She is godly. 
as a character and she is free. Uh, let me show you how to get her really quickly. Now, there's an island over here where you can get to the Spiral Abyss. You need to be a little bit higher until you're able to travel there. Uh, but there's actually going to be a teleporter uh, up on this ridge here that will teleport you there. It's a small little puzzle. You go into the teleporter and it will allow you to teleport right here. Now, when you go into the Spiral Abyss, there's multiple floors with multiple different enemies. And uh, as you make your way through, you're going to get a bunch of resources, which is amazing. Oops. Let me back out here. Um, this is, you know, 300 Primo Gems. This is where you're going to get a lot of Primo Gems to do your initial wishes uh, as you level up. But each floor gets harder and harder, right? This floor is level 45. The next floor is level 50, and it's going to scale up from there. That being said, to get Shang Ling, you have to beat floor 3, 3. And this floor is easy. It is so easy. There's a bunch of slimes and basic enemies, a bunch of treasure hoarders, and uh, the Rune Guard is the hardest enemy there. However, they're level 45. If you just level up one character around 35 to 40, I guarantee, with a little bit of practice, you can beat this and get Shang Ling very early in the game, and she's going to be a game changer. So don't be scared of going in here. And, you know, as you play through the game... Uh, you're going to make your way further in. Make sure you're doing this because this is also uh, one of the main ways to get resources long term uh, if you're looking for Primo Gems. You don't get as much in the later floors, but they do reset and give you some artifacts. Floors 9, 10, 11, and 12 reset every couple of weeks. As you level through the game, you're going to get this adventure book with some very easy quests to do as you're playing. Uh, but you've also got these commissions. You need to do these commissions every single day because it gives you primo gems. It gives you one of the biggest boosts to experience. This is like the main way to level up in game uh, and more primo gems when you complete all of them. This is no joke. For the amount of time this takes, this is the main activity if you want to progress through the game and get your adventure rank up. Every day that you miss is a lot of experience lost. It is primo gems that you're not getting. And uh, if you want to be wishing and getting five-star characters, this needs to be a priority. Now, there's also information on all the different domains and different things, but you can also track different enemies and boss-type uh, characters in the game to get their different drops. Uh, many of these are needed to ascend your weapons and characters, and so this is something that you can actually go like this, go and navigate, track them down, and slay them, and it's something you can do every day, especially early on. Now, when you get a little bit higher level and you start exploring more, you can go to this mountain called Dragonspine. Now, this area is a little bit tougher than some areas in the game because you get a, a freezing debuff that messes with you and takes away your health. But there's some awesome chests and quests in here to find, and also some free four-star weapons that can change your gameplay. Now, there's the Snow Tombed Star Silver. You can actually get this, uh, you can get a weapon blueprint to craft it, but you can also get a full-on sword for free. Just Google how to get the Snow Tomb Star Silver. I've got a video on it. There's multiple videos of it. It's just a little puzzle that you can do, but getting this weapon relatively early could be good. You can throw it on a character like Beto, which you're going to be getting for free. This is Beto, and that's the character that's going to be available for free. You can throw it on Razor. There's multiple characters that can use this weapon. It's not god tier, but it's still pretty damn good and free. There's also a, uh, a weapon here, this Dragon Spine Spear. It's not absolutely amazing, but there is a quest that you do uh, that gives you all the resources to craft this. So you can also get a spear, which you can give to Shang Ling that you're getting for free as well from the Spiral Abyss. So there's a couple of four-star weapons that are easily available. Uh, there's this bow. You get this Favonia's War Bow as well for free for doing some of the early missions in game. I believe when you beat one of the bosses, don't want to spoil anything, uh, you get this bow for free. So you're going to have options and uh, you, you're not going to be pressed to uh, do enough damage. Now you might notice that a lot of my characters are leveled up one less than the maximum. Uh, getting that extra level costs a lot of resources, and depending on the world tier you're in, you might not actually be able to ascend them to the next level. So if you're at level 40 ascension, get them to level 39 until you can take them to level 50. That way you're always passively getting experience, and uh, it does save you a lot of books long term. All of my characters that are 89 out of 90, uh, there is no level 100, and so I'm just passively getting experience. You can see here I've got 85,000 experience uh, over time while doing this on a couple different characters. This one's got 50, he's got 87, and so it does add up over time, and eventually you will get that level, even if it takes you months. As you find chests around the map, you're going to get these sigils, which you can turn into the souvenir shops. 
There's one in each city, and you can actually get Mora and different upgrade materials. I want to show you really quickly. Now, the sigils will allow you to get Mora as well as Ascension materials really early on. Using these to ascend your characters to the next levels, as well as some of your weapons, can be a very big boost to your damage overall in early game. You can also get some weapon blueprints or billets, uh, which you can get from both cities. And this is a huge boost because some of the craftable weapons are fantastic, and you can pretty much get one of every weapon type. Now, some weapons are stronger than others, you know, others, so let me talk about that really quickly as well. From the big world bosses in the game, you can get these prototypes to drop, but unfortunately, they are extremely, extremely rare. You can go weeks, if not months, without seeing one drop. And this is nine months of hoarding, and some of these are ones that I've got from some, like, quests, uh, as well as from purchase, that I've never crafted anything. So, um, you know, it is, it is definitely something that is important. Uh, you can make some amazing weapons, but I personally have been hoarding, waiting for some better weapon choices, and I want to explain that as well. Now, there are a handful of weapons in here, but until tomorrow, when all of the new ones launch, there's actually going to be a bunch of new weapons to craft in the game that are potentially better than everything we see here. So I don't want to bait you into getting anything, but there have been a lot of people that have got this prototype archaic. This is a pretty solid weapon overall, if you're looking for a main DPS weapon. Um, the uh, Crescent Pike. This is arguably one of the best weapons in the game because of the passive ability here. And so there are a few in here uh, that are definitely good. My recommendation is before you craft anything, because they're so rare, is just look up a review on these weapons or see if there's any footage uh, of different characters using it so you can get an idea uh, if it's good on your character. There's a lot of variables here depending on who you have, so I don't want to bait you uh, too early, but there are a few great weapons for crafting and more are coming very soon, uh, soon with Inazuma. Now, I talked about leveling up some characters and focusing on just a couple, but to do that, you're going to need resin. This is the most important resource in the game because when you're out of it, well, there's, there's not as much to do. <laughs> this is what you need for every activity uh, in the game. You want to fight a boss and get the rewards? You need resin. You want to do a domain to get talent books for your character? Resin. You want to get experience books for your character? Resin. I think you get the point. Now, the further you get into the game, the more valuable each resin gets. If you were just starting, you would get far less experience books than myself. My recommendation is to do all the quests, find the chests, and do your daily commissions every day to get your adventure rank up, so all the resin you're using is valuable. And that goes for fragile resin, which I need to talk about ASAP. Now, I have a transient resin, which is essentially a fragile resin, but you're going to get them from leveling up your adventure rank and multiple different things in-game. I would highly recommend not spending any of your fragile resin until you are further in. They are a consumable item that will actually give you resin to complete activities, and you're going to get like 50 of them as you play. It is much more valuable to wait until your AR-40, AR-45, use them for artifacts or different you know, domains and dungeons down the road than blowing it early. Yes, you can level up sooner, and that's cool and all, but they definitely do get more valuable as you play the game, so just be careful not using too, too many. If you really want to get an upgrade that's going to help you, do what you got to do, have fun with the game, but just be careful. Now, this item reminded me of something else that I personally don't love, the Serena Teapot. The Serena Teapot is going to take a while to unlock, and if you haven't played for a while, it is going to take you some time to get adventure ranks and get to the quest needed. But it actually allows you to get to a player-owned house, if you will. Now, this is something that, for the most part, is free to do. Uh, you need to chop down some trees and get different resources so that you can play. However, uh, there are some great resources from this. Now, as you play through it and you get all the blueprints and uh, you start leveling up, you'll actually be able to buy extra resin each week for free, as well as things like Mora that you can get for free. This is always really valuable. It is a bit of a slog, but being able to unlock this and get these resources without having to spend resin is very valuable, and the sooner you start, the sooner you benefit. There are also these special sets that you can work towards, and you can actually invite characters to get rewards as well as primo gems, and so it's very valuable long term, and I should definitely recommend this because it's like thousands of primo gems that you can get. Now, another thing too is, like every gacha game, unfortunately there is a lot of 
content that goes away. This whole little area here behind me, this whole cool area where you get to ride a boat and do all these things, it's going away in 19 hours. It's gone. So if you are just jumping in, try to get as much of this completed as you can. There's a bunch of chests and, and different quests and stuff here. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of the content in this game comes and then it goes. So whenever there is an event on, make sure you do it. Because many times the rewards are amazing. Uh, you don't have to use any resin to get them, and they can be absolute game changers. In the case of this one, it gave Primo Gems experience and even a free outfit. And there's other ones that are going on all the time. So make sure whenever a new event pops, make all that progress you can each day. And uh, make sure you don't slack on these, because if you're a free-to-play player, this is make or break for your account for the most part. Now, as you start playing the game and getting primo gems from chests and quests and these different events, there's multiple banners that you can wish on. Now, this is the character event banners, the character event wish, and this gives you a 50-50 chance at getting this banner character or one of the other five-star characters. Now, if you get one of the other five-star characters, the next five-star will automatically be this character. The four stars on the banner will also have an increased rate up to get them. And, um, you know, chances are, if you wish on this banner a bunch, you're going to get a bunch of these copies. You can see here, I've got a Razor. I've got a Dragon's Bane, which is a random weapon. But then I've got Rosaria. I've got uh, another uh, Razor. I'm always getting these characters. But I got a Chi-Chi here, which was not the main character. So the next one I get, whether it is this banner or or another banner, the next one that's coming in just 16 hours, I can get that character if I choose. Now, I gotta still get lucky and, you know, get the wish, but it's something to consider is your pity will carry over from this banner to the next. Now, the weapon banner is a little bit bait, but it is getting better. Currently, uh, you could spend $2,000 on this banner and it wouldn't go one and then the other. You could get the same one over and over again or a bunch of different weapons. It is pretty crazy. Now they've made it so that uh, if you get two of the wrong weapon, you can then get the, the next one on the third one. But it's hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of dollars of Primo Gems. Uh, tons of saving if you're trying to do that. The weapon banner, I think, is a bit of bait. And the reason I say that is because the normal banner. The normal banner is something that you will get wishes as you level up in the game uh, from different rewards, from, from different activities. You will get to wish on this, um, you know, over time. And you will get some five-star characters, but you will also get some five-star weapons eventually. Now, even though these characters and these weapons are on the banner there, there's no rate up on this banner. Everything is an equal shot at getting it. I would never spend any of your Primo Gems or uh, buy any of these blue Acquaint Fates uh, from the shop because this is just like the, 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 the bonus banner. Just a little bonus banner, you wish on it, eventually you get something fun out of it, but it's not a priority, that's the way I see it. Now speaking of the shop, let's go over there because that's important too. I would never recommend to spend money, but if you are going to spend money, the Blessing of the Welkin Moon, I suppose, is the best bang for your buck. It gives you like 3,000 Primo Gems over the course of the month, which is pretty good considering it's $6.99 Canadian, so it's like 5 bucks uh, American, but again, I don't recommend spending money in this game. Now, the Battle Pass is al always really good as well. It's not currently available as of me making this video, but the Battle Pass, you can get it by pressing F4 uh, if you're on PC. The Battle Pass is definitely pretty good as well. But the main thing I wanted to talk about are the, uh, the other things available in here. So, there are characters that you can actually purchase uh, with this Star Glitter. You get this from um, wishing for characters and getting different characters and weapons. Uh, you can also purchase wishes flat out, and there's also some weapons like these Black Cliff weapons that are actually pretty good because they've got crit damage. Now, this is tough because depending where your account is, you might need different things. Getting a character and getting constellations makes them stronger, but it is 34. You could also use those same 34 and get five uh, or seven more wishes almost, right? That's almost seven wishes, which could get you towards pity for a five star. So there's a lot of different ways you can argue how to spend it, but I would consider holding on to 34 at any moment in time because there's characters like Xing Cho and Bennett that will be in the shop here that are game changing four star characters that I would recommend getting. So um, as you wish through the game, 
you can buy these wishes if you really, really want, but I would personally hold on to this star glitter uh, as much as you can. As for star dust, this is a little bit easier to get. And one of the nice things is every new month, so in 12 days, uh, you actually can get five of each type of wish uh, for free. Now, you need to do wishes in order to get that currency, but typically, like, I've never spent money in this game on this account, and um, I was able to, like, I'm able to get all of these wishes, and uh, I've never missed out on any of them. So, as long as you are wishing, doing quests, doing chests, getting all the Primo Gems, you will be able to afford these things for turn. But all of these materials, if you're free to play, I would never recommend buying. You will regret it. And for the love of God, do not buy this stuff. If you buy this, you are brain dead. All of this stuff is farmable from enemies. Uh, that's your last warning, okay? Now, in the new update, you can also get a Beto for free. I don't know exactly which day, but this is an awesome four-star character. And if you start getting a few of her constellations, like C2, she becomes an amazing character overall. So keep your eyes peeled and make sure when that event is on, you do everything you need to get the four-star character. Because that's essentially getting, you know, 10 free wishes, uh, you know, handed to you right there. And Beidou is pretty sweet. But the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the main character. A lot of people don't talk about the main character uh, because... They're the main character. They're, they're the first character you get. In Inazuma, their Electro Element looks to be extremely good. And so even if you've seen videos saying that this character sucks, that isn't going to be the case moving forward. And even the Animo character that it currently is, is much stronger than it was because of recent buffs. A lot of videos, unfortunately, are going to be outdated. Don't worry about leveling this character. I think it's actually a pretty good decision. It's one of the cheapest characters to level because you don't need a bunch of resin. You can actually get this uh, just from getting adventure ranks and leveling up in the game, which is really, really cool. Speaking of the different elements, there are, you know, Pyro, Hydro, we've got Animo. What the hell do they all do? We got Cryo. It is important to know all the different elemental reactions, but also... What putting different elements in your party you can do for your team? By placing multiple different elements in your team, you can get these different elemental resonance. So if you place two flame characters on your team, your entire team will get 25% increased attack. If you have two water characters, you'll get more healing. And so it's important to mix and match and put characters in that will give your team some extra value. On top of this, it's important to know all of the elemental reactions. If you hit something with Cryo, and you apply Cryo, and then you hit them with uh, Pyro and melt it, you're going to get a big two times damage multiplier. I recommend looking on the websites uh, that are available to see all the different reactions. I would put it in the video, but honestly, it would take quite a while to show off all the different interactions and talk about what they do. There's already videos of that on YouTube, and you can just look that up, honestly. Uh, I think that's your best course of action. Also... Also, food buffs in the game are extremely important. Now, there's a bunch of different healing items as you go, but as you get further into the game, there are some insane pieces of food that will give you attack damage as well as crit rate. If you ever feel like you're struggling in content, look to craft some of the food that you can get early on that will boost your attack. It can be an absolute game changer. And, um, you know, these things typically last like, you know, five minutes up to 15 minutes, depending on the ones you craft. Now, there's also uh, stuff like the Buoyant Breeze or the Barbados Ratatouille. This is very easy to get. I've done a guide on how to get the Barbados Ratatouille as well. This reduces your stamina from sprinting around the map as well as gliding. And so things like this can be really good for exploring. I used to use this all the time when I first started the game. And uh, it helped out a lot while trying to hunt for all the chests and quests. Domains, dungeons, all sorts of different content is going to get much harder and the enemies are going to be much higher level. You know, going from level 38 to 88 is a big change. And unfortunately, depending on the weapons and characters you get, some of them might be very difficult for you. But there is co-op available in-game. You can see right there. Don't be afraid to do co-op. Some people are going to carry you, and they're not going to mind because sometimes they're doing some activities to get some Primo Gems. They're doing some achievements in-game. So don't be afraid to do co-op. Just try your best, and this can be uh, a nice boost if you are in a new world tier and struggling. Now, weapons are very important for your characters. Obviously, you're going to want some five-star weapons if you can, but a lot of the four-star weapons, like the stringless here, some of these are 
insane, almost best in slot, even though they are a four star. Now, many weapons in the game, you know, they're obviously from the gotcha, uh, but there are some different event weapons that pop up from time to time, which are insanely strong as well. I wouldn't recommend ever wishing on the weapon banners um, to try to get the weapons. I would keep going for characters over weapons because you can craft many weapons to fill in the gaps. I've already kind of talked about this, but it's just something that I wanted to talk about is you will get weapons over time and don't stress out if you don't have a five star early on. I don't think it's really necessary because a lot of your damage comes from artifacts. Artifacts are extremely important in the game and uh, it is going to take you a long time to get you know, <laughs> a whole bunch of gold artifacts. It is going to take you time. But I have a recommendation here. As you ascend characters, they will drop. As you do world bosses, they will drop. And you can do domains for them as well. But I would not recommend doing it until you are at the highest world tier for that. I think it's AR45. Because every single time you do the domain, you get a gold piece to drop. And so the value per resin spent is much higher when you're at AR45. You'll be able to compete. You'll be able to hang. Don't stress out too much and don't be farming it any earlier. Even though you can see the gold ones here, it's a pretty low chance. It's like one in three and you're going to blow so much resin getting trash and uh, you're going to be stressed out. And while talking about artifacts, I have something very important. Elemental cups are one of the biggest boosts to damage that you can get. If you get a purple cup or a gold cup, I don't care what set it is. If it has an element on it, early on, you need to hold on to it. For most characters in the game, you're going to try to get a set bonus, right? Two or four pieces. And more often than not, the cup is the off piece that isn't in the set because it is very rare to get the element you need as well as some good stats on it as well. It's very, very tough to get that stuff. So make sure you hold on to them because you're going to desperately wish you did if you end up deleting a good one. Uh, it, it's, it's tough. I think I've gotten one of these cryo damage ones like in the history of my account. Not, not even kidding. It is so tough sometimes. So please, for the love of God, hold on to elemental cups. Blue crystals are very important to farm and I highly recommend using the Genshin Impact interactive map. Uh, to mark them down, or if you happen to run across something, mark them down on the map so you can go back there every few days. I think it's 72 hours for them to respawn, and you can use them to craft the main weapon upgrade material here. Uh, you can craft these Mystic Enhancement Ore. It takes thousands of these to fully level up a weapon, and so starting sooner rather than later is a big perk. But I've got a guaranteed way for you to get crystals every day. At the Adventures Guild in each city, you can do expeditions. These are just passive ways to get resources, and you should be doing these every single day. You can get things like Mora. You can get different, uh, you know, crafting materials for food items, uh, but make sure you're doing the crystals every day. And there's also going to be down the road, multiple regions that you can do this in using multiple characters. This is an important feature. It does add up over time. And uh, you might be wondering, why are you trying to get some radish and some carrots? Well, I've got an explanation. The parametric transformer. As you play through the game, you're going to get this parametric transformer. I think it's like AR30 or 35. It is something where you can take one material and turn it into experience books, talent books, weapon ascension materials. It's a free way to get resources for trading in food items and other basic things that you've got a ton of. I've got 700 carrots ready to go, and I funnel this in every week. It's not something you can do right at the beginning of the game, but it's something to pay attention to. Now, there's a bunch of other gadgets in here that are important, and I really want to recommend getting a treasure compass. Now, for me, I would recommend working on the Geo treasure compass first, and I want to explain how you do that. So each city has its own reputation, and there's multiple quests you can do each week. However, there's only so many quests you can do each week, and if you do them in Mondstadt, you can't do them in the other city. So you need to pick and choose which one you want to focus on. For me, I would do this city first, Liyue. Uh, it's going to take a while to get there and, and be ready for this, like AR 20, 25 kind of thing before you really make your way over here. And so if you want to do a few in Mondstadt, it is what it is. I don't actually know when this opens up, but I would highly recommend focusing on this. Let me go over there and show you. There are multiple reputation levels that give you different gadgets, and at level 6, you get the treasure compass. Now, you can do these bounties and requests each week, but also in the Inazuma region, there's going to be that as well. 
You can also get, uh, get reputation for doing exploration as well as quests in the area, so you'll naturally gain reputation as you play. But if you want to push into the higher levels, you need to do these every single week, and it is a bit of a slog. But the thing is, is with this compass, when I press the button, you can see here, it is actually tracking to see if there's any chests that I haven't opened in the area. And if there is, it will point me in the direction of it. This has got me hundreds of chests, so much experience, tons of resources, because I found pretty much every chest in the game because of this. I run around the map spamming this, and every time I pick one up, I, 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 I get, you know, a couple little resources. And even nine months in the game, I still find stuff. There are so many hidden ones that you would never think to look there, and you're going to get... Um, you know, a lot of bang for your buck here. So make sure to get that in both regions and use it. And I'm guessing there will be one in the new region in Azuma as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And one of my final ones is there are redeemable codes. If you go to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash mtash and go exclamation point codes, uh, you can see some there. But if you just Google uh, free Primo Gem codes, uh, there are typically uh, different codes that are available uh, for you to enter. That's Pretty much it those are my main tips i think i covered all the main stuff that i i think will help you early on if you're a new player uh there might be some amazing tips though if you have a, a great tip to share with everyone put it in the comments section down below share it with the world you can read through the comments hopefully it will help you out uh thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and make sure to check out kingston fury if you're looking for a pc upgrade to your memory Thanks again. Have a great day. I'm Mtashed. Like, subscribe. Yeah, shut up, Michael. Go away. Huh, okay.